Hey everybody and welcome back to Jay's Retro Reactions. Today we're going to watch part two of the Buck Rogers episode, double episode, called A Plot to Kill a City. In the first episode we've seen Buck go undercover to infiltrate the Legion of Death or the Legion of Interstellar Mercenaries, whichever you prefer. And in there he had to deal with an empath who could sense emotions, a telepath who could move objects with his mind. We had a genius strategist and we had a guy who has all these nerve endings cut and feels no pain. Buck has successfully managed to infiltrate with the help of Jolly, who's some random girl that it looks like he's going to bring back into his harem. And for some reason, Wilma was able to take out the guy with no nerve endings and can't feel pain with what looked like a nerve pinch. But anyway, let's go with the flow. So the plush to by the Legion of Death is to blow up New Chicago, a city of 10 million people, by using their antimatter matter power generation plant. And they're going to cause an antimatter reaction which will make the planet or that area around New Chicago uninhabitable for centuries. One of the mutants with the Legion of Death, who came from a nuclear a planet devastated by a nuclear uh, explosion, is kind of concerned and Buck seems to be working on him to get him to come over to his side. So we'll see how Buck gets on. We'll see will the Legion of Death get away with their dastardly plan. And as usual, enough of me talking and let's get on with the show. Welcome to my party. We're just getting started. A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring. Are you going to believe someone you never met before today or... Or someone we never met before yesterday. Okay, episode proper starting. Stop him! <laughs> and this pirate guy's nicking all the gold and silver cups. Why not? He is a pirate after all. <laughs> Time working. Yeah, but that's not gonna work with Big Telepack guy just gonna scoop it out of your hand. Okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> Buck managed to take him down. <laughs> Strap foiled by a bloody space hoover. It actually looks like one of those Star Wars cleaning things that we've seen in Star Wars. I'll meet you in the main terminal of the spaceport in 10 minutes. Right! That's right, Buck, you meet Joey in 10 minutes to bring her back to your harem, along with Tanji. Ah! Buck has been captured by the mutant guy who can blend into stuff like a chameleon. And Buck's all right. Buck isn't with me. What? Yeah, Wilma left him behind, Doctor. Well, it's not as if I wanted to leave him there. No, 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 of course not, of course not. <laughs> yes, you did, Wilma. You legged it as soon as it hit 3 p.m. Now, whoever you are, whom do you work for? The Stellar Authorities? Not more raw hypnol. The empath's going to use raw hypnol on Buck now as well. All right, all right, I'll tell you. And Buck Evan quite quickly there, didn't he? Who are you and what did you do with Argus? Aaron Whist. Okay, so Buck is claiming to be this some assassin these guys seem to have heard of. A different assassin than the one he claimed to be originally. Try and tell us you killed Raphael Argus? I never said that. You never heard me say that. How come the empath can't sense Buck is lying? Right? To me, that's the obvious question. And how do we validate his story? I have this friend. We're at the Earth Defense Directorate. No, Buck, what are you going to do? They're going to use their undercover agent on Earth to validate if you're this guy you're claiming to be for the second time. Shortly, you and the rest of the city are going to be blown to bits. Yeah, but that's you too, mate. You will be destroyed as well. Exactly. Not the brightest guy, is he? Still no word from Buck? No, none. No, Wilma, because you left him behind and didn't go and save him like you're supposed to. He's still not accustomed to subspace communication. We've kept all channels open ever since you returned, Colonel. We've heard nothing. Exactly, Wilma. You doomed Buck, whether you like it or not. No point feeling buyer's remorse at this stage. And here's our undercover agent. Who looks so shady he should have been caught the minute he walked in the door. He's Aaron Whist, all right. Hmm. So in the future, we print Polaroids. Okay. Circumstantial evidence does indicate that he indeed has killed Argus. For a genius strategist, this guy is quite stupid, no? He's a formidable ally. 
He's an arrogant fool, Kellogg. I know all these dudes and Ladettes are supposed to have all these special powers, but from what I've seen so far, they're all baseless claims, right? The only guy that seems to be able to do anything is the telepath. I think the others are just bullshitters. The empath can sense anything. The strategist is a moron. The guy with nerve endings that are supposedly severed got taken out by a nerve pinch. Do you agree with me, guys? Let me know in the comments. That could be very dangerous. That's what you were paid for, Harstein. Yeah, undercover dude. Do your job. And I suggest that if Mr. Whist gives us any trouble at all, we eliminate him. But at least the empath is the only one talking sense, even if she's not that much of an empath. Whist is a non-existent criminal. And Buck was instructed to use Aaron Whist as a secondary cover. Ah, so the undercover guy put a bug in the doctor's office and is hearing all the details of how Buck is impersonating this other guy now as well. Dr. Hugh requests permission to return to Aldebaran immediately. Denied. He must get out of this himself. I understand. I don't. Why, why Dr. Wood Wilma's appearance suddenly may put him in more jeopardy than he already is? Dr. Ewer just doesn't strike me as a doctor at all. As I said, I think he gets all the credit for Dr. Theo's work. He turned us in for the money, didn't he? I discovered that the credits with which my friend Kellogg paid me off were, shall we call, tainted. Uh, so Kellogg is paying off all these uh, dudes with counterfeit credits. Great. Have you ever thought of leaving this primitive mud bowl and entering civilization? Oh! Ah! So the Priors is trying to steal Jolie away from Bot's harem. Light eight. There, there they are. Anagar, Temple, and so how's Buck going to get out of this one now that they've uncovered his true identity? Finally. Kellogg, we've been through this before. He's an agent for the Earth Defense Directorate. Haha, -ha, Buck. How'd you answer that one, man? Is Jolie going to rescue you? <laughs> She's going to foil them with another space hoover? <laughs> and that's exactly what she did. Come on, Buck, run, my friend. Barak, go in there and dispose of him. Exactly, this guy can walk through walls. So shutting the doors ain't gonna do you much good, Buck, now, is it? <laughs> Great, and he can phase out of reality so not to be hit by the phaser. Ah, oh, I knew it. This guy, the mind tricks Buck was playing on this guy earlier on, has worked and he's gonna help Buck now. Great, lovely mutant face. Can't imagine life on my planet. The children are afraid to look at their own reflections. They didn't quite get the uh, practical effects right. You can still see his human eyes under his mutant eyes. You stop them. Please. It's done. That's fine. But surely Kellogg's gonna kill this mutant guy once he finds out Buck is still alive, no? It was you who tapped the databank for information on Aaron Whist. Ah, Mr. Undercover Guy, you're cut. What exactly does Kellogg have in mind for- Because he obviously logged in under his own name and they're able to trace the logs, which is kind of stupid for supposedly a skilled undercover agent. Buck Rogers is a dead man, Hewer. Like all the rest of you. And again, this idiot doesn't realize that he's been captured and is going to be in that capital when the bomb goes off, man. So if they're dead, you're dead. By the way, thanks for what you did back there. You could have been killed. I haven't had this much fun in months. <laughs> <laughs> Joel looks like a, a girl who likes a bit of a dangerous time and a bad guy. Buck might be in luck here. Thanks, Buck, for not casting me aside after you're done with me. Not yet anyway, Joel. We may do it later. So if at any time you want me to drop you off. Uh-uh. We've come this far together. We'll go all the way. I'm sure you will go all the way. I think I even know where we can find a ship. Terrific, let's go. Oh, don't trust the bloody Turkish pirate guy again for his ship. Come on. I really hate the idea of stealing some poor Schleff starfighter, though. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Wait till you meet the owner. Yeah, it's the Turkish pirate guy. He dubbed you in before, Buck. You owe him one, Buck. You think that I would sell you out for a few thousand credits? A few hundred thousand? I see. Yeah, that makes more sense. A few hundred thousand credits, you know, is understandable between friends, surely. <laughs> I'm looking forward to flying here. Actually, it's cosmetic. The engines are in terrible shape, terrible disrepair. Nobody's... <laughs> Barney, you're the king of the bullshitters, mate. We know the ship is working fine. You already told Joelle that she could go with you. 
Barney, if I don't get to Earth, a very sizable chunk of a planet I'm very fond of is going to be destroyed. Give me your ID plate, Barney. All Barney cares about is money, so I think Buck should offer him a few quid, and then he'll give him the ID card, no hassle, and stay on side. Like, what's to stop him after they take the ship running off and telling the bad guys that Buck is on the way to foil their dastardly plan? Nothing. Enough, Pat, enough. I'm tired. Go over and play with your sister Katrina and let me rest. So this is the electricity power plant guy that the empath is supposed to do something with? What? Seduce him? You have access to the contraterrene generating plant. We want into that plant. It's just that simple. Yeah, but what are they going to threaten him with that he's going to give access? That's the part I'm missing. I won't do it. It would mean my job. I won't do it. Are you as brave when it comes to the lives of your family? Okay, so they're going to threaten to kill his family if he doesn't do it for them. That makes sense. But surely all he has to do is go to the cops. Don't harm my family. Don't worry, Mr. Selvin. You do your job and they'll be fine. Yeah, but surely, as I said, all he has to do is go tell the police and then they can arrest him, no? I can't imagine life on my planet. Children are afraid to look at their own reflections. Very heartbreaking, Mr. Mutant. I do recognize that actor's voice as well. I can't remember from where, but something in the 70s or 80s. Kellogg's plan is to sabotage a reactor outside New Chicago. Very well. I'll lead a ground squad to the reactor myself. And why are you only leading a ground squad now, Dr. Hewer? Because you knew the reactor was the target, so why not before? I told you it might be dangerous. You have a real gift for understatement. <laughs> why do all the good-looking ones have to be crazy? The same is true for women, Jolie. Trust me. But why not send Varric in ahead and let him open the doors from the inside? The portal can only be opened from the outside. It can only be opened from the outside, not from the inside. That's why the mutant with the facing thing can't do it. And it's got some sort of ID recognition functionality, so that's why they need this engineer. Okay. You'll never make it beyond the maintenance androids. <laughs> And we all know these guys can't cope with androids, so that's probably quite a big threat for them. <laughs> ah, hidden palm scanner. How clever. <laughs> what are these, robot security guards? Zero six, zero five. They walked really weird. Androids, as you can see. Shall we continue? Robot security guards on you. Not much good if you can take them out with one phaser shot. Wilma! Hey Wilma, meet the new member of my harem, Jolie. Or Joella, sorry, not Joey. Joella, I'm gonna leave you in two of the most capable hands in all of New Chicago. They will introduce you to sites you never dreamed existed. <laughs> that sounded a bit weird from Buck. Sites you never dreamed existed. Lee, what a fox. Now wait a minute. <laughs> Tweaky is calling her a fox, so is there some weird robot sex gonna happen between Joella and Tweaky and Dr. Theo? Again, it wouldn't surprise me. That is a Neutronium Vault door. Not a Neutronium Vault door. I have no idea what a Neutronium Vault door is. But Mr. Telepath seems to be able to deal with it, so... No hassle to Mr. Telepath. Door gone. One more step and we activate the defense laser. The sensor switches on that far wall. Varric will turn it off. Very gonna follow this order because once they get through, that's it, they can do the bomb. <laughs> and he did it. It's done. We're not handing out medals, Varric. Or is he gonna turn it back on when they walk in? One of these buttons gives us direct access to the main control room. The other releases a potent nerve gas. So they have chemical weapons deployed as well as part of the defenses. Neat. He's lying. They really must trust that empath and her judgement. But as I said, it's been very iffy so far, particularly around Buck. Have the people at the plant been alerted? Well, there are no people at the plant. That's great. A plant that can wipe out 200 kilometers of square territory for centuries only has a few maintenance and security androids guarding it. Very clever, guys. Very, very clever. And again, we have our 70s view of the future computers, which are all just big, huge machines with flashing disco lights everywhere. If the bottles erode, everything within 200 square kilometers will be destroyed. That's the plan, Mr. Engineer, including your family, so you shouldn't have helped them. Although you did try and stop them with the nerve gas thing, the lie, so fair play. Murdering liars! <laughs> Here goes Mr. Telepath guy again. Oh, whatever strikes me.
They just did, Mr. Sir. I just, they just did strike you. I mean, dispose of him now. No. Farrick's turning traitor. Good. I will not allow you to destroy this city. A lie. But tell that guy ran out of telepath steam. <laughs> and again, why didn't the empath pick up that Varric was about to turn traitorous? Like, it makes no sense. <laughs> and what, this guy has a special gadget to deal with Varric's phasing in and out of reality? <laughs> But hopefully that delayed this crowd, Kellogg and Co, long enough so Dr. Hewer can take forever, which he is taking, to get to the plant with the actual guards. Real guards. If you would be so kind as to use that on this. So to set off the plant's antimatter, if it was just as simple as shooting a laser at it, why was Kellogg doing all the programming earlier on? Like, again, it makes no sense. Legion of Death. A legion of death. <laughs> All right, Hewer, that only took you about six hours. Well done, man. Who are pretty much useless. This is Hewer. I've just arrived at the plant. We're only 30 seconds from joining you, Doctor. So Buck and Wilma can get all the way from another planet and do the whole interstellar travel thing and be there 30 seconds, just 30 seconds later than Dr. Hewer. I told you, Hewer's incompetent, guys. There's the evidence. Three minutes. 30 seconds. How bad is the damage? Reaction. Very bad. They just lasered the bloody platform console. Good lord, they've destroyed the controls. So Varric's not dead, he was just knocked out? Doesn't seem like Kellogg would just knock him out. Surely he would have killed him for being a traitor, given he's an evil genius and all that. Someone has to go in there. I'll go. I know what you can do, but even you may not be able to survive in there. Varric is willing to sacrifice his life to save New Chicago from a fate that his own own planet suffered. Fair play, Varric. A man of morals, despite the mutant face with the poor practical effects. What's shaking, Porky? <laughs> he is a bit porky. Thank you for calling it out, Buck. I sure am. The Buck's going to be doing his manual controls ace fighter thing without any training as he did before and wipe out all these Legion of Death guys. One minute, 45 seconds to terminal reaction. I wonder did Star Trek steal this idea? Isn't this similar to one of the Star Trek movies? Don't ask me which one, where Spock goes in and supposedly dies and gives up his own life to cool down a reactor or something like that. I'm not a huge Trekkie, I just remember that movie. It's Quince, he's frozen my controls. Help me, woman, distract him. Ah, Buck, Telepack guy has frozen your manual controls, but we know he runs out of steam, so he won't be able to do it forever. Just hold on, mate. Bye-bye, <laughs> Telepack guy. Wilma got you. She smoked you. Bye. Thanks, Buck. Thank you. So now it's two on one. They just have to take out Kellogg, and I don't know where the empath lady's gone, because she seemingly is not in the ship. <laughs> Buck, let's head down to the plant. I'm with you. But where did the empath lady go? Is that who's been told back to Earth? I haven't seen her in a ship, though. 45 seconds to terminal reaction. Doctor Hero, what's happening? Why do they always make the control so complex when you have to stop a near terminal explosion on these reactors? Why isn't it just a simple shutdown button? Voice command, anything. Anything that's less complex than this. 14. 13. 12. The tension, the tension. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. He did it. Farrick saved the Earth. Well, not the Earth, New Chicago. Code 5 emergency is no longer in effect. But of course, Farrick is going to die, I bet you, and be the hero that Earth needed but didn't deserve. What's happened to him? A few last atoms of antimatter must have escaped. Oh, he's not dead. Let us help you. Let us show you we're kind and caring, Varric, as a human race. By the way, your face looks better after the antimatter explosion. Any luck tracing down Charisse? None, I'm afraid, Buck. So the empath lady escaped by all accounts, then? Well, what'd you think of him? He is everything you said he'd be, Buck. 
I'm telling you, Tweaky and Joelle did the business. <laughs> What's so funny? He is, didn't you hear? <laughs> Look, you've lost her. She's not going to join your hurrying. She's gone with Tweaky, man. Hey, everybody, welcome back. That was the end of the second part of A Plot to Kill a City, or episode five. So what did I think of that episode? Honestly, it was good cheesy fun. I'm not going to say it wasn't, but I did feel overall the story arc wasn't quite as strong as some of the previous episodes. There was a lot of plot holes in this one. The empath not being able to detect lies from Buck or, you know, Varric turning traitor. The strategist guy being extremely dumb in a lot of circumstances etc etc which I already covered in commentary you've heard it already no point in repeating it but yeah the plot holes made the story arc a bit weaker for me I felt there was the bones of a good story there you know evil geniuses with all these special powers kind of like super villains wanting to attack the earth and do catastrophic damage like all super villains do and Buck being the good guy to the rescue so the bones of kind of the general story were there but i just felt the fleshing out was a bit weak and that would be my criticism of this episode tweaky and uh joel getting together at the end <laughs> okay right everything's possible in the future but it looks like buck has lost another one for his harem so he'll have to wait to grow it another day but i'm sure he's going to grab some more women in the future coming episodes anything else i want to say on this not really, guys. I think that's it. It was good cheesy fun. I enjoyed it, but not as much as the previous episodes. I will say that. So I'm going to stick. I think after part one, I give it a rating of six out of ten. And I think I'm going to stick with that rating after finishing the second part as well. It just didn't get stronger, unfortunately, in terms of tying up those plot holes. In fact, it actually made it worse, as I discussed. So I won't go into it again. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me. Please join me for my next reaction to Buck Rogers and all the other reactions I do as well. Just pop in, say hello, and let me know your comments on the story in the comments below. Whether you thought it was weak, whether you thought it was better than the previous episodes, would you agree with my rating of 6 out of 10 or would you give it a different rating? But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, God bless and bye for now. <laughs>